Hey what's up guys, it's Ben Bonk, and welcome back to the 48th Slime Keep devlog. In this devlog, I fixed some of the fundamental game design issues with Slime Keep. Also, if you're new here, Slime Keep is a fast-paced roguelike where you must kill and capture slimes to stop the corruption that has infected your land. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, to start, let's talk playtesting for a second. Typically, when I release builds to my playtesters, I get a bunch of bug reports and small issues for me to fix. But occasionally, my playtesters will also report, well, bigger fundamental game design issues that take much longer to fix. And I wanted to finally take some time to address some of these issues with the game. So I made two Discord posts sharing some of the issues that were brought up, and turned each issue into a mini poll so I could gauge which issues needed the most action. And with some really good data in mind, I got to fixing some of these issues with the feedback of my playtesters. So for the first issue, which is a bit of a small one, the starter pistol in the game felt a little strong. In some cases, the player could manage to get by with it in later stages of difficulty rooms, which is something that I really didn't want, so I just very subtly nerfed it by making the bullets a little more inaccurate and decreasing the fire rate of the weapon. Nothing crazy here, but I thought it was a good start. But moving on, I made an actual pretty big change to the core game design. Right now, if you don't know, the player in the game can fight the Slime King or final boss whenever they want. All they have to do is simply walk right from their home area, and there is this boat they can take to visit the Slime King. Now, I've always liked this mechanic because of the player freedom and decision making it allowed, but I couldn't help but acknowledge the trend of some of my playtasters who would just completely ignore all enemy rooms and go straight to the Slime King. Now, hypothetically, it would be difficult to beat the boss like this, but I still just thought too many people were grinding it out this way, so I wanted to address it, but also not completely remove the player's inherent ability to choose when they want to fight the Slime King. So I made two big changes. Firstly, with the help of art from Supergen, I added in this bullet Ken looking NPC as a bit of a reference to Enter the Gungeon, who would serve as the boat keeper in Slime Keep. Now, instead of just being able to hop on the boat whenever the player enters the room, they will have to pay a fee of 50 slime balls to use the boat, or they cannot ride it. This way, the player has to at least account for this cost when wanting to beat the game. Oh, and I also fixed the bug where the slime pet would always hop in the boat kind of backwards, which really annoyed me. But this wasn't all. I also wanted to change the way the boat rooms interacted with the world, so here's an amazing presentation I made to explain how the new boat rooms would work. Hey guys, it's Ben Bonk, and this is my presentation on the new boat room stuff. So, so now, boat rooms on days one through four, there will be a 25% boat room spawn chance per day on these days. And for days five through eight, there will be a 33% boat room spawn chance. And then days 9 through 12, a 50% bedroom spawn chance. And for days 13 to 15, a 75% bedroom spawn chance with a 100% spawn chance on day 16. And then where will the bedroom spawn? Not next to the player's house anymore because they gotta go out and explore stuff themselves. So randomly throughout the level now, so they'll actually leave their house and can't just go there whenever and stuff. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that amazing presentation, and to actually implement the system, for each day I simply made a few level graphs that the procedural generator would randomly use when choosing the rooms in the level. So for example, on day 1 I have these 4 level graphs. Three of them are the exact same, while one of them has a boat room in it. And the generator will randomly choose one of these 4 level graphs on the first level or day, leading to a 25% chance of the boat room spawning. Which I think is pretty cool, and you can kind of see it in action here by generating a bunch of levels. Anyways, if I actually run through the game here, I can see the boat room spawn seamlessly into the level, and it'll no longer always spawn right next to the player's house. And if I stumble into this boat room on the last day of the game, or day 16, you can see that the boat room will always spawn on this day, and the boat keeper won't charge a fee like usual, so the player can actually have a chance at beating the game. Now, all this was really neat, but one issue was that the level generator didn't necessarily always love this change, as sometimes it could get stuck generating due to the very large size of the boat room, and couldn't find a good place to place it in the level. So to fix this, I made this flipped boat room variation, which seemed to solve the issue. But anyways, that's the new boat room system there. It's a pretty big change to the game's design overall, but I think it's a very needed one, so let me know what you think in the comments. And speaking of the comments, I can't help but comment on how amazing these Slime Keep Steam pages, especially that button right there that says add to your wishlist, which you should totally click as it helps me out a ton and takes like 2 seconds to do so. The link is in the description, thanks. But anyways, we still weren't quite done with the big fundamental game design changes for now. There was still another very pressing issue that I want to address, so I'll let Presentation Ben Monk give another quick explanation. So, right now in the game, we have these three stages of slimes. This is the minor slime in the game, just a pretty standard difficulty 3, average sort of difficulty slime in the game. So right now, the minor slime in stage 1 
drops anywhere from 9 to 12 slime balls, stage 2 drops 12 to 15, and stage 3 drops 15 to 18 slime balls. And the issue with this is that, well, there's not that much of a difference in between these slime ball drops. Right now, hypothetically, the stage 1 slime could drop 12 slime balls, grow to stage 2, grow to stage 3, and then hypothetically, this stage 3 slime could drop only 15 slime balls, meaning there's only a difference of 3 slime balls between waiting for these stages to grow in this difficulty, making it so that it's really not that worth it in some cases to actually have these slimes grow. So an ideal fix to this would be actually making it worth it for the player to let these slimes grow, and changing these slime ball drops to something like this, meaning that there's a much greater difference, in this case 10 whole slime balls, meaning that the player really actually wants to wait for the slime to grow in order to maximize their slime ball game. And another similar issue to the slime ball system is the health in the game right now. As you can see, the health in the game right here for stage 1 is 9 to 12 and so on. Which is again an issue because there isn't too much variance in letting these slimes grow and not that much of a difference in difficulty as these slimes actually grow. So oftentimes the difficulty of the slime is just very similar across all three stages, which is definitely an issue. So to fix this again, boom, 5, 10, and 15 health make it really easy to kill the stage 1 slime, which gives you not that many slime balls, but then if you wait, the slime actually gets much harder, but more slime ball drop. But that's not the only issue with these slime balls in the game. Another issue is that there's way too many slime ball drops, especially later on in the game. So for example, an average weapon in the game may cost around 60 to 70 slime balls, and an average upgrade might cost anywhere between 30 and 40 slime balls. And this right here is a difficulty 5, meaning these the hardest difficulty, but stage 1 slime who hasn't grown at all. And already, this slime drops a whopping 19 to 23 slime balls. Which means, hypothetically, I could just kill 3 of these guys without even letting them grow whatsoever, and boom, I have a weapon, which just didn't feel right whatsoever. So I definitely need to fix this. Okay, so there we go. Quite a few fundamental design issues there. So to fix them, I kind of did what I said in the video and standardized these slime ball drops for the slimes in the game. Now instead of these subtle variations and drops, we had very big variations in these slime balls. The same goes for the health system. I made it so it's quite easy to kill stage 1 slimes, or slimes that haven't grown at all regardless of their difficulty level, and harder to kill slimes with later growing stages. So now the trade-off between letting slimes grow and becoming more difficult, but also dropping more slime balls should really be at play like I always hoped. So overall, even if these changes may seem small, hopefully they should help the whole flow of the game overall and have things be a lot more balanced. Anyways, let's now go over some of the more requested changes that I got from my playtesters. First, some people found it kind of annoying how every time the player wanted to view an enlarged minimap, they would have to open the slime book and pause the game, which would just take a few seconds. So I wanted to allow the player to open up the minimap without pausing the game. And to do this, I made this minimap border an ace sprite, I then took this border, and there we go, new minimap that the player can open without pausing the game. But after sharing this to my playtesters for feedback, many of them didn't think it looked the best. So I updated it a bit to be more transparent and overlay across the screen, which was definitely an improvement that I'm glad I made. But next up, Lydiac and my Discord server, who actually happens to be one of the main composers for Slimekeep, remade the main health bar in the game. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I really like the look of this health bar, but I was still just a bit unsure if I wanted to change it, as the old health bar has just been in the game for so long. But with enough convincing, I made the change and was pretty happy with it, and thought that it fit the rest of the UI a bit better. Oh, and also, brief unrelated note, if some of this newer footage looks even brighter green than usual, sorry about that, it's just footage from my new laptop and I don't know why, but everything looks brighter on it, so I'll try to fix that in the future. Anyways, another big suggestion I got was to make the player be able to hold down the mouse button to shoot instead of requiring them to click every single time they wanted to fire a projectile. So after a bit of programming, I set it up so that now the player can actually do this. Although when holding down a weapon instead of clicking, the fire rate of a weapon will be fairly slower, so the player can just hold down all weapons and there be no repercussions. Another feature I added was to these pits around the rooms, where now the player can drop any of their weapons into them and the pit will suck them up and spit out half their value of the weapon in slime balls. This way the player can get rid of weapons they don't like and still get some value out of them. And the final gameplay change I made for now was I greatly increased the max capacity of slimes that the player can hold in their inventory with the capture gun. 
but instead, I made the trade-off where the more slimes the player is holding, the slower move speed they will have. So as you can very subtly see, if I start to capture all these slimes, my move speed overall will just slowly decrease, incentivizing the player to drop off their captured slimes in the pin area. And for the final thing I'll touch on in this devlog is that I basically spent another full month of just pure bug fixing after all this. Normally, I do this whole process, but if I'm being honest, I just didn't really record most of these bug fixes as I didn't think any of them were too interesting. It was just a really frustrating period for me. So yeah, just keep that in mind I guess when I create these devlogs as I try to keep them as consistent as I can, but it just kind of depends on how much content I'm actually able to record. But anyways, that's all I have for this devlog. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to wishlist Slime Deep on Steam, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.